it seems to be good data on one side, the concerns over Syria are on the other. W which is winning out? At the moment, it seems to be fractionally the data, but certainly the Syria situation has the potential to worsen significantly. Like you just mentioned, uh, the, uh, Obama got approval from the uh, Senate Foreign Relations, Foreign Relations Committee, uh, but the, the tone of the sort of statement was guarded, wasn't it? They said uh, they were looking for military action in a limited and specific manner. But I mean, I can see several problems, uh, very you know, immediate problems that would arise from any kind of uh, attempt at an attack on, uh, on Syria, even if it's not of the boots on the ground uh, variety, which seems like very, very unlikely. Uh, but for a start, Syria has um, reasonably sophisticated Russian bought uh, uh, ground to air and shorter ship missile defense systems. Also, the fact that the Iranian uh, negotiations, uh, the sort of back channel and negotiations between the US and Iran that have been seemingly uh, progressing recently, uh, they would immediately be cut off given uh, uh, Iran's relationship with the Syrian re regime. Uh, and then you've got Russians intre Russia's interest in the region. Uh, but so far this week, we've had some very good data. We've had the ISM new orders, uh, which pointing to better times ahead, over 60 the number came in. Uh, and also, you know, PMI series in UK and Europe, uh, yep. both pointing to better times. And, and, and throw into that mix uh, the ECB today, of course the Bank of England today. Uh, w what is Draghi going to do now? Yeah, I mean, I would have thought very little, but he's going he's, he's gonna to want to uh, talk uh, down the prospects of recovery probably a little bit uh, and get people's feet on the ground as much as, uh, as, much as is possible. Uh, how much that is possible, I don't know. I mean, central bankers, as we know, don't have uh, complete control uh, over borrowing costs long end or short end, to be honest. Uh, but he, he, he can do his best, I guess. But it does feel like uh, the European and the UK economy are both starting to, uh, to, to enjoy recoveries that seem to, be, uh, seem to be a little bit more sure-footed, let's say. But no change on, uh, on stance from Carney, I imagine, right? Uh, no, I would suspect not. And what, what, what grade would you give uh, Mark Carney so far? Yeah, I mean, we've asked this before. I don't want to give a specific grade, but uh, <laughs> so far he seems, to have, uh, he seems to have done well. But I think the important thing to remember is that, uh, that central bank forecasters are no better than anyone else's. And also that central bankers don't have complete control, uh, even if they have to pretend that they do, uh, over, uh, over, the, over the yield curve. Uh, that's been proved as much because, uh, you know, as much as Carney was saying that we're not going to raise rates uh, for, for however many years, uh, the bond market started to talk a bit, to think a bit differently already just because of the tone of the data. Is the UK equity play a good one from now to the end of the year, though? Uh, it's very difficult, isn't it? Because the UK equity market doesn't actually speak to the UK economy particularly. Uh, it's mainly sort of Asia and the rest of the world, uh, given where the banks and the miners and the, uh, the oil and gas industry seem to face, which are the major sort of players in the UK market. Uh, but certainly the more domestically focused areas of the FTSE uh, have, have been of interest to us for about six months now. And I think, you know, the leisure sector, uh, you know, some of the retailers, even some of the UK banks, which are starting to look like a bit of a better investment. Uh, we've just put Lloyd's into our portfolio, for instance. Uh, but these are sort of all worth a, uh, worth a, worth a look at, I think. Mm.